Hello, hello. We are back on this Thursday, April 2nd, for your read aloud. Um, we are on chapter 13, How to Get Even. So at first, Michael and I wondered why Anna would come to school with a roll of plastic wrap. Was it for some kind of science experiment about osmosis or non-porous surfaces? She was wrapping sandwiches in one of her classes. If so, how lame was that class? Hmm, maybe she's just gone hyper clean, said Michael. She wants to wrap all of her pens, pencils, and junk to, in plastic to keep them sterile. Maybe with enough plastic wrap, she can seal out the grizzle goop germs that cause bad breath too. Then we heard about the unfortunate incident in the girls locker room. It seems somebody stretched a sheet of clear plastic across both of the toilet seats right before class and right before Kea and Tiffany went into the stalls. Of course, Kea and Tiffany were always the first ones to use the two toilets right after gym class. None of the other girls were allowed to relieve themselves until after the big two did number one. Funny thing about plastic wrap, if you stretch it tight enough across the toilet, it sort of becomes invisible. Especially when the toilet seat is down. And when it comes to bathrooms, girls always want the toilet seat down. Or so my mom tells me on a regular basis. Anyway, there was shall we say, a problem. Kay and Tiffany both ended up with gym shorts that became used diapers. Within an hour, their incident in the girls' locker room turned into the unfortunate incident. Anna confessed to the crime. Ugh, call it revenge, she told the vice principal. Therefore, it was served cold. She was sent home immediately, but not before she donated the rest of her plastic wrap to the cafeteria. Use it for the leftover corn dogs, she told them. It'll stop them from tasting like whatever you keep in your freezer that probably shouldn't. Principal Ferguson and Vice Principal Driscoll gave Anna only a half-day suspension. She was instructed to report back to school the very next morning because that's when we'd be taking some more state tests. If Anna didn't take them, the average score at our school would probably drop by three points. Yeah, Anna Britannica is that smart. Anyway, after that, we were treated to an afternoon filled with serious discussions. We need to talk about this, kids, said Miss Funkelberger our social studies teacher, who everybody said was a real-life hippie. What Anna did was so wrong. Miss Frunkelberger was probably 60-something years old with frizzy hair and granny glasses, tinted pink. Most of her clothes were tie-dyed. So let's wrap, she said to the class. Let's it all hang out. Did Anna choose to be kind? I don't mean to be judgmental, but I'd say no, she did not. Your mind is like a parachute, children. It doesn't work if it's not open, so radiate positive vibes. Oh, uh, why did Anna have to be so mean to poor Kea and Tiffany? This one girl asked. What'd they ever do to her? Ugh, plenty, I wanted to say, but I didn't because I fly under the radar, remember? Ugh, I don't get it, said a guy. It's crazy. She's crazy. That Anna girl is weird, said another girl, a friend of Chaos. She writes a million numbers in a notebook during every single basketball game. I'm sorry, but that is a sign of true wackadoodle weirdo. Yeah, most of the other kids in Miss Funkelberger's class couldn't understand why anybody would play such a mean trick on sweet Kea and Tiffany. Michael and me? Huh, we totally got it. Chapter 14. Science 
fairy tale. Let's jump ahead to the science fair. You should know we scrapped the tornado in a bottle, Delio. We started playing with it, but the tornado just looked like a lot of stuff being swirled together. Like we were making chocolate milk with glitter and water instead of, you know, chocolate and milk. We decided to do something that would be make us middle school heroes. We would totally fix the school cafeteria. The main problem was that the line to get food moved too slow. Our solution? Zip trays. We yanked a few wheels off my old skateboards and bolted them to the bottom of the cafeteria tray. Okay, we probably should have told the cafeteria ladies we were borrowing a tray, but we were sure that when they saw our invention, they would be so happy they wouldn't give us any grief. Since the science fair was being held in the cafeteria, which is the weird made-up name they have for the big room where we eat lunch because there's a stage on one side and a chow line on the other, it'd be easy to show off our new invention. But speedy zip trays weren't our only improvement. Everyone in the school agreed that the corn dogs in the cafeteria tasted like those frozen wieners wrapped in cold pancakes they sell at the supermarket. So Michael came up with the idea to serve low-cost and delicious gourmet corn dogs. Michael's foster parents are too lazy to cook, so he fixes most of the food at his house. He's really good at it, too. His corn dogs are made with chili and cheese and bacon. On the day of the science fair, we decided to dress up. Anna and I wore our best outfits. Michael wore a that's a word for French people call a tall white chief chef's hat. We set up a card table right where the food counter starts, and Anna stood next to our trifold board labeled the middle school cafeteria of the future. I was stationed at the tray rails to demonstrate the zip tray. Michael was down the line behind the counter ready to serve up samples of the gourmet hot dogs. Unfortunately, all of the other science fair exhibits were set up on tables all the way to the other side of the cafeteria. Nobody came to visit our booth. But that all changed when Michael took the lid off of his first tray of corn dogs. One whiff of that bacony, cheesy, chili deliciousness, and exhibitors abandoned their projects. Form a line at Anna's card table. Welcome to the future of our cafeteria, she said to like three dozen kids who were frantically sniffing the air like Rottweilers in a snossage factory. Oh, what's that smell? asked one. New and improved chili cheese corn dogs with bacon, said Anna, tapping Michael's recipe, which was displayed on one of our boards. And now you don't have to wait for speedy service. She gestured towards me, introducing the zip tray. I took a step forward. Allow me to demonstrate, I said, just like we rehearsed. But nobody was in the mood for a demonstration. Bacon drives kids crazy. They wanted Michael's corn dogs now. So we will continue with chapter 15 tomorrow when a good idea goes bad. Have a great day, guys.